can't wait for Right, I am so happy to have someone, one of my favourite guests on my channel back, Matt Rolski from Cultivate Elevate. And when we have Matt on, there's so many different directions this show can go in because there's so many interesting things to talk about. Um, but first and foremost, how are you doing, Matt, and what's going on in your world? I'm good. I'm just, you know, waiting for it to be summertime soon. It's getting a little warmer now, so... You know, everything's blooming and it yeah. was funny. It was going outside showing uh, the land and how everything is just blooming like crazy from all the electroculture antennas. And I showed like the trees and everything coming out, but everything's good over here, you know, just trucking along and then working on my electroculture book and just getting that all put together with the pictures. And that shall be an exciting, you know, rabbit hole for people to see a different side. I'm so excited about that. And I wanted to start with the electroculture because I've just started with mine. So all my houseplants, because it's still quite, we're still getting quite a few frosts here in the UK. So I haven't gone out and replanted a lot of my vegetables and stuff. But, and I've got some big fruit trees I've got to do as well somehow. And I'll have to get your advice for that. But I'm just loving doing the electroculture. So let's start with that. And most people would have heard of it, but we've got a lot of new listeners. So can you start and tell people what exactly is electroculture and how did you get into it? So electroculture is harnessing the atmospheric energy that's all around us, the ether, the chi, the prana, the life force, the orgone, whichever word you would like to call it. There's energy that is existing all around us. It's the fifth element known as ether. And it's interesting because that element was removed off the periodic table in 1908. So when we talk about this term, it's usually considered woo-woo, pseudoscience, you know, witchery, whatever it may be. But it used to be on the periodic table before 1908. So what we're doing is we're creating atmospheric antennas as you have placed behind you in your plant. It's a piece of wood wrapped with copper and you're placing that into your planter pots or into your garden so that you can harness the beautiful atmospheric energy that's all around us. What this does is it allows the plants to grow faster. You don't need it, pesticides, you don't need chemicals. It brings pollinators, it brings birds, it brings bees, it brings animals, you know, bats and all kinds of things and everything will pick up on that energy. But your plants will start to grow faster. And it was interesting because in the last, you know, two years as I've been getting into this, you know, I've been watching just remarkable success stories. And it's one of mine was and how I got into this was I was doing a lot of research on this topic. I had an Akashic reading in 2019, 2020. And the lady I talked to, she told me to look into crop circles. Mm -hmm. And as I looked into crop circles, I started looking into pyramid energy and clan energy and all these different things. And it led to copper. And it was funny, um, as I was learning about this, I decided, I think I'm going to try this. You know, I'm going to make these antennas. I'm going to put them in my garden. I'm going to see what happened. And I tried it on my Moringa plant, and it was on the third floor balcony. This was, you know, in Scottsdale on the, on the pub public road, lots of noise, all the stuff that was there. And instead of yielding just a six-inch Moringa pod, I yielded a 14-inch and 22-inch Moringa pod. And I was blown away because I thought, this must be the secret to the pumpkins. You know, you think of those big 2,000 yeah. pound pumpkins, somebody understood energy. And we think of like food all used to be a lot bigger. It's shrunken over time. Same with people. People yeah. used to be a lot bigger and they've shrunken over time too. But, you know, through all of this, it's it's been just a journey of understanding energy and all of the untapped energy that we just aren't taught about. And the best way to think about what you're replicating is the antennas that are on top of all the cathedrals. You see all these old world buildings with antennas on all of those. Usually those have a piece of copper that's attached down from the antenna and runs into the sacred garden next door. That's what gets them those big, beautiful gardens that, you know, people don't know about. It's, it, it's so easy and it's such fun to experiment with things like this. I've got all sorts of plans, so you probably won't see me much on the computer because I'll be out there doing all these things in my garden. But there's a lot of wisdom to it. One of the things that really hit home for me, I was doing some studying on some natural therapies that I use. And one of the things that copper peptides are really involved in stem cell production. So again, there's a link there and everything in terms of, you know, getting the body to heal itself needs copper and that process. It's an integral part of it. And I think I mentioned last time we used to put in the old days, we used to put copper pipes in one of the horses water drinking troughs and let them choose. So when people are doing the electroculture, what are some of the tips to get them started? It doesn't have to be complicated at all, does it? 
No, it doesn't. And this is really simple. You know, you can get a piece of wood from your backyard. The wood will resonate the same frequency as you because everything that's in your backyard picks up on your frequency. So you get a piece of wood and then you take it and then you wrap it with copper and you create coils around that piece of copper or around that piece of wood. And you take the copper, point it up towards the sky, take the other piece of copper, point it down into the earth. And you just take that antenna and place it into your garden, planter pot, backyard, wherever. Wherever you're growing food, you place your antennas. And if you want to amplify that, you can add crystals on top that will also give a color spectrum, such as quartz, lapis lazuli, lodestone, you know, all the different stones you can place on top. And you, that will help amplify the energy. You can also wrap them with copper so you can create a piezoelectric effect. And that will also give additional energy. But it's wild because you get to have fun with it. You get to go back into your creative state. You know, you get to go back into, if I wanted to make an antenna, how would I make it? Yeah. And that's the fun part about this is it gets you back into connecting to your creativity. You know, instead of us just, you know, we read something and we're, we're not, you know, absorbing it fully with this, we're getting creative and designing and kind of going, well, what works best with my land? And then placing these antennas all over We'll start to gather that beautiful energy that's all around us and also harness static fields which are coming up from inside the earth yeah and there's so much i mean most people i think are becoming aware now that the minerals are not because the microbiome of the soil is so disturbed the minerals aren't getting from the soil into the plants and therefore not into us so that's going to really help with that process as well if you've got animals make sure you bend over the edge so they're not going to poke their eye out <laughs> i thought about that with all my cats so in terms of people getting started it the best thing is just go out and have fun isn't it and play with it and experiment and see which work placing them in making them in different shapes um i'm going to try some pyramid ones and putting them in different locations and seeing what results you get yeah you know you can you you should feel out your land you should be in touch with your land you know i walk all over and try to figure out where i want to put things you know and i it's like dousing you know that's yeah. what everybody used to do they used to go around with the dousing rods and they'd find water and gold and gas and oil and everything unlimited everything but you can use dousing rods if you wish to place the antennas in the areas in which you want them to be, or you can just simply put them into your into your garden. And this is also, once again, getting you connected. And like you said, we don't need pesticides, we don't need Monsanto, we don't need all these chemicals, because think about this, if you take chemicals and pour them all over your land, and then it poisons your food and poisons your land, it's gonna poison you too. It doesn't make any sense that we poison everything and then we have all these nutritional deficiencies because of the poison and then go and eat the food that contains the poison, you know, and then wonder why we have these health ailments. So with this, you don't have to use any of that. You know, you can use just some simple, you can use basalt, which is volcanic ash, if you want to put that all over your soil. Or like I said, you can do stuff with stones and quartz and different assortments. I've been building a lot of dolmens where dolmens are where stones are stacked on top of each other. And I've been filming what grows out of the areas which have the dolmens, you know, so that goes back into geomancy and us connecting to the earth. But all of this is about us connecting to our land, because if we just assume everything's just going to grow and it's just going to do whatever and whatever else, then we're not putting any care, love or intention into yeah. our land. So this is connecting us back to that and opening up our creative aspect while boosting the electrical conductivity of our land. If you think of all of the telephone poles, all of the electricity they're putting around, it's my theory now that that's to dampen and lower our energy on our land. So it's harder for you to grow food. This is bringing it back so that you can grow in abundance and you're not dependent on the grocery store. Absolutely. And just the, the fun of doing it, it's getting you out, spending time in your land, experimenting, trusting yourself um there's so many benefits so what else can we expect for when your book comes out and how near to that it, uh, you get in that book out is it so it's almost done and i'm just working on putting together all the photos i have a lot of photos that date back to 1835 the wow. royal agriculture society utilizing electroculture writing essays about electroculture you know so this goes back they uh, many people know of this you know this this technique and also, you know, another part that relates to the electroculture, which is really not talked about, is the benefits of copper, like you were saying. Yeah. 
we have all this iron. We have all these iron tools that lead to rust and decay and also heat up the soil. Every time you strike iron against the soil, you're creating heat and you're actually clumping up the soil and it gets all dense and, and hard to work with. Versus when we're placing copper into the soil, it slides right in and doesn't create any uh, heat and also allows the water to flow. So when you start bringing the copper back into your soil, you don't need as much water. And then also too, the electrical conductivity can flow again. And it was interesting because I put the one expert, uh, the one uh, excerpt in there from Victor Schauberger. And this is where I pretty much learned everything from, you know, he's one of the greatest people. I think everybody should look into his work, but he proposed all this. This was all done in the 1940s. He proposed that everybody should be using copper tools in their soil so they could get great yields. And a politician in Bulgaria, when he presented this, basically put out a broadcast on the newspaper and the radio that if you use copper tools in your soil, you'll yield too much food and you'll not make enough money. So all the farmers who received this message instantaneously thought, oh, I don't want to work with copper. I'm going to stick to steel. And it was because that politician at that time was getting a kickback from the fertilizer yeah. company. So you start to see, we've been told one thing, but there's this other side, which has been presented for a long period of time. And my book is going to go into all of that. And then I've also added things with color spectrum and sound, because for example, bird sounds are very crucial. If you listen closely, you'll probably hear the birds outside. They're always gathered. The bird sounds are very crucial for our plants. And then when it comes to color spectrum, those are also very important. The color blue, the color of the sky is mm -hmm. very beneficial to our plants. So my book is going to go through all of those different things and just open our eyes to all the people who I think are so important, who we've never been taught about. And yeah. that's what the book is dedicated to. It's dedicated to all of the souls in which we've never learned about. And I think when I look at it, it's purposeful because it puts us with the dependency on the grocery store and whatever Franken foods they try to sell us. So many people are waking up now to growing their own foods and anyone who's got children, they love it. They absolutely love it. I've been growing um, wheatgrass and barley grass um, shoots all winter for my animals, actually, because the guinea pigs and rabbits and horses and dogs all love it. And it's such great fun. So I've got trays of everything everywhere. So this book is going to be a must have for things. And one of the things I'd love to encourage everyone to do is let us know in the comments below what you've tried with electroculture and what's working for you. Because the more we share this, um, the more people would be encouraged to get out and do it. Because I am noticing quite a lot of people talking about things and not doing it. So how would you encourage people to actually now there comes a time where you've got to balance the studying with the action so with that you know just grab a piece of wood and grab some copper and Ooh. just try it and place an antenna and see what happens you can even forget about it if you want you know i had a lot of people they put an antenna somewhere and they're like oh i just left it they came back and they're like oh my gosh you know my plant is like three times the size or it was funny i had another friend who just took a copper pipe and they just threw it in their backyard and the tree next to it was producing a ton of apples, you know? So it was just funny because they were like, I completely didn't even realize. I just, I had, a, you know, tossed it. But that's the thing, you know, it's just try it. You know, we can sit here and talk about it and come up with ideas. But if we don't try it, then we won't know what will happen. And it's been a wild journey of people trying things. I'm going to be showing a lot of pictures of, you know, before and afters in the, in the book. But it's just all just crazy things I've seen. I've seen beets the size of my head. You know, yeah. I had a friend grow a 42 pound watermelon, um, you know, just uh, the, the so many like zucchinis like this big and things like that, but just remarkable things. And it, it makes me realize like nobody needs to live in fear. You know, that's the whole point. Like the whole point of trying this is that you don't have to live in fear of your food supply and everything else. You can grow something, even if it's just one or two things, it's better than nothing. And then oh, you can create right. amongst people and it creates this beautiful community, you know, and we can sit here and, you know, sit in this fear state of, 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 you know, scarcity and, and being paralyzed, but that doesn't get us anywhere. That no. just gets controlled, you know, and I'm not, I'm not for any of that. No, I completely agree. So from your journey over the last few years, what are some of the sort of top three things that you've learned and implemented that have made the most difference to your life? I mean, the first one I would say is getting out in nature. 
Yeah. You know, every day when I wake up, I'm out in nature. I have my either my feet in the ground or I work out outside, you know, specifically like every single day. I either if I'm not doing that, I'm doing meditation or doing some chanting, you know, or doing like a yeah, like a really deep meditation. But that I think is the most important part. You know, we're very eager to hop onto technology, computers, devices, all of that. It's all present. It's always connected all the time, you know, but we need to really spend time with nature, connect with nature and really calibrate our mind, you know, because our health is the most important thing. And us connecting to nature, I think, is very, very crucial. And then, you know, when I go into the next one, I would say eating all organic, you know, back in the day, uh, 2017, I watched a documentary called GMOs Revealed. It was 22 hours long and completely changed my whole life on GMOs. It made me realize how a lot of our foods are sprayed with all kinds of things. And I don't want to put that into my body, you know, so going organic, I would say is the next one that really changed my health and then understanding frequencies, you know, removing Wi-Fi, all of that stuff from the house, I think is crucial. I don't need these unwanted frequencies pinging in my home. It doesn't make any sense. It's not faster and it's not safer. It's actually hackable and everything else. And then, you know, moving in from there would be going into your clothes, understanding wearing about natural fibers and how important you should be wearing linen, the beautiful powers of linen and wool and cashmere and all these beautiful materials. And then last but not least, I would say is filtering your water, you know, making sure that you're not putting these, you know, toxins into your body from the water supply. But, you know, those things changed my health completely. And I just did one step at a time. And it's just, you know, you never really realize how, you know, I look back at pictures of myself of what I look like, let's say at 28, whatever, and I sit there and go, oh, my gosh, you know, I just I couldn't see like inflammation, pain, swelling, all of the things that were going on. My tonsils would always swell up, skin issues, whatever it may be. I couldn't see all of that, you know, and then I sit here and go, wow, you know, I live such a different life. My brain works so differently. And I'm, you know, 10 years older. And, yeah. it, you know, you sit there and go that it's not supposed to go that way. It's supposed to, you know, as we've been taught, it's supposed to get, you know, progressively worse and whatever else nonsense. But, you know, that's another thing, too, the mindset putting yourself into the right mindset so that you understand how to start your day. You know, no matter what happens, even with the nonsense I see in the sky, I still start my day and see beauty in nature. You know, I was observing all the the, the plants and, and touching the plants and things like that. But, you know, that's, I think that's all of those things really play a big role on your health. And I think if we don't focus on taking care of our health, you know, it just keeps falling apart. And then we don't understand what the root cause is. So try to address what each little thing at a time work on one little thing at a time and go from there. It's so encouraging, isn't it? When you see nature, soil, the human body, our animals, when you make some really relatively simple changes, their power and the recovery um, to get back to through full health and vibrancy are huge. I mean, you touch there on mindset and mindset's a sort of a tricky one really because a lot of people just don't realize how vibrant they can feel, do they? Well, no, because, you know, you sign on and the first thing you see on whatever device it may be, you know, it could be the television too as well. But, you know, any of these devices, you just see chaos. Yeah. You know, like I signed on yesterday after, you know, being out in nature and there was that the Internet outage, which was like the, the, the alleged solar flare that only affected like New York City, which is funny. <laughs> It's, it's, yeah. it's but you know when you when you see something like that it's like okay this is trying to put you into a mindset a mindset and i was sitting out filming robins i have robins by my house now which is funny and you, in scottsdale you don't really see them but i was out there filming them and just watching them and whatever and i came in and you know i had people messaging me and whatever and i thought this is what they try to do they're trying to put you in chaos before you even start your day think of your cells you know your cells if they see chaos when you start the day they're going to be in a chaotic state for the rest of the day. It's very hard for the body to relax, mm. calm, restore, repair because of that. So, you know, it, when I look at it, I, like I said, try to start my day with a positive mindset, spend my time in nature, clear my head, and then go into it. And then when I do go into it because of seeing something like that, I'm seeing it from every angle and going, oh, my gosh, you know, they cut the, the ocean cables today, maybe, you know, because the Internet runs through the ocean. Yeah. So maybe just cut a cable and then people had the internet was out but then it leads to all these other things of possibilities and it's like it's not like that and it's funny because my internet goes out all the time a bunch of times but it is what it is you know i've started to realize that we just adapt it's such a beautiful thing and if we're too dependent on this and in this you know 
crazed mindset, which they're trying to put you in, then they're controlling you. They're controlling your energy, your power, your essence, everything. And we have to realize that we control our essence, our power, our destiny from there, rather than people who are trying to put us in stuff or broadcasting something that could be fake and not even real and then putting us into more craziness. Because that's another side that most people don't know. Like you sign on, a lot of the stuff is CGI and fake, and then you're put into a crazy state for no reason. So, you know, it's important to learn discernment and look through the nonsense. And I think cleaning up your health, going out in nature, cleaning up your water, all of those things all play a role too, because everything you're consuming, energetic-wise, food-wise, water-wise, all contains a frequency, and that's also impacting your mind. Massively. I've just, I'll have to say it very quickly, because otherwise YouTube will ban me, but I've just literally finished speaking to Kathy O'Brien about the MK Ultra and mind control. And we were covering quite a lot, the frequency side of things, you know, what the progress that's been made in that over the last sort of 60, 70 years. And most people are completely unaware of it. You know, when you've got your phone there or the computers or the Wi-Fi or, or even just the electricity, these frequencies are just pumping into you the whole time and can affect every aspect of your physical and mental health and make you very, very controllable. And we see that with the animals a lot. Um, it's just tragic really that people have the probably the best thing that could happen to people is they could have regular internet outages <laughs> well and that's funny that you said that because i actually called it a blessing people yes. can repair and heal and then also turn back on the frontal cortex because most people don't realize that wi-fi is and all of these frequencies are impacting the frontal cortex this is your thought process mm -hmm. when this area is disabled you move into the side cortexes, which are your emotional state. So when these Wi-Fi's and frequencies that they're trying to give you, they're going right here, disabling this, and then you move into an emotional state. And that's why I'm so advocating all the time about hardwiring your internet. Yeah. You know, get an internet cord, get a USB adapter, turn off the Wi-Fi, turn off the guest Wi-Fi, plug in your devices. Like right now, as I talk to you, my device is plugged in. Yeah. It's faster, it's safer. And it's also not pinging unwanted frequencies in which I cannot see, which could be causing me headaches, loss of smell, dizziness, you know, losing your hair, being nauseated. Those are all symptoms of radio wave sickness. So, you know, it's important to be aware. And like you said, we can't see any of this stuff, you mm -hmm. know, so we don't think, oh, it's, it's safe. But remember, every device in which they sell the general public has been tested on a plastic dummy with water in it to deem it safe. It's it's just quite ridiculous, actually. And it's it, but the, on the good side of things, it's like when they tried putting everyone in lockdown. I was quite lucky; we just all just ignored it. But um, when they did, when you break people's natural routine, then they'll start thinking. And actually, the more they start doing things like that, I'm very confident it will backfire on people because people, when they can get out of that routine that's just been completely run from their subconscious program mind, um, that's when more people are going to start asking questions and waking up to things. So um, I do think that whatever the reason is, it can backfire on them and be a positive, definitely. So. Well, I uh, and not to cut you off, but I, I like that you said that because with social media, you know, I've been censored so much yeah. like on Instagram and every platform, whatever. I'm banned from Facebook. I was banned in 2020. But, you know, like it's I've been censored so much. And it's so what's happened is, is people have moved to other platforms like Telegram, you know, Rumble. And also, too, a lot of people have just left. You know, most people don't know, like a lot of people just left Instagram, yeah. they've left Facebook. They're just over it. And like you said, after a while, it's like, if your phone kept having issues all the time, you just get over and you go do something else. You know, you go read a book like The Invisible Rainbow, which I highly recommend everybody check out. But, you know, that's what people should be doing because you don't realize consciously how much time you could be being consumed by something that, you know, as I said, when people are scrolling, what are you scrolling for? What are you looking for? And if you ask that question before you even start scrolling, you'll go, oh, I don't even know what I'm looking for. You know, yeah. and, and that that's where we've gotten into this, where we have to realize, you know, that there can be this beautiful thing when things are disconnected. And we sh should have, when we have that disconnect, use that time wisely and then go, maybe I need this all the time. Maybe I need to spend more time in nature and kind of less of this 
and kind of disconnect because it's a beautiful thing. And that's what we used to do before all of these devices start, started to try to you know take over our lives. Yeah, I'm lucky. I'm old enough to remember what it was like before then. And, you know, I was well into adulthood before we had mobile phones or computers and everything. So that is how old I am, everyone. So getting on to the health side of things, um, there's such a fantastic revival in people looking into back to nature again. I mean, nature literally does have all the answers for us. You've been on a real journey with your products and your cultivate energy, uh, elevate with that. What's exciting you most about that? What What's really lit your fire about really starting to use some of these natural substances and sharing them with people? Well, the pearl powder one is just an absolutely wild one. You know, I've had a lot of people reverse their eyesight. They go to the eye professional and they're two points back, one point back, you know, three points back. And the eye professional is asking them, what are you doing? You know, yeah. and one eye professional actually said, you shouldn't do any of that. And it's like, well, why? There, yeah. she's, the person's healing, you know? So, you know, it's it's really taught me a lot about how we can heal. You know, when I was younger, I mean, I had glasses and contacts and all of that. And I thought, oh, you know, just and in, in my family lineage, you know, there's thicker and thicker glasses, mm -hmm. which also don't make sense because you're never addressing the root cause. But, you know, it just it just was what I was taught, you know, and it was taught generation over generation to teach you you need glasses and they got to get thicker and whatever else and your eyes get worse. But, you know, this journey, I mean, especially for the last two, three years, has really taught me that we are self-regenerating beings. And we're not taught this. You know, we're really put into a box of we can't heal and we have to be dependent on this, you know, Rockefeller system and all this other stuff and whatever else. But I've started to really realize we don't. You know, we really don't need any of this. And Pearl Powder has been absolutely remarkable for that, you know, healing the eyes. The most wonderful study I ever read, and this is kind of what started Pearl Powder, was I read about a professional who was using pearl powder with her patients. She had 100 patients with cataracts, and she gave them pearl powder for two months straight. After two months, 60 about 60% 60 of the patients all reversed cataracts just by using pearl powder. That was the only difference. They would rub it around their eyes, and they would just consume it. That yeah. was it. And it was just, I sat there and thought, oh, my gosh, you know, this is this is something. If this can do this... This is remarkable for people for healing. And especially even for myself, I had eye issues and whatever. So I thought, let's try it. Rolled it out. And now it's just been absolutely stunning the amount of feedback and people just, you know, helping with eye pressure, eye sight issues, you know, sleeping issues, skin issues, connective, you know, tissue issues with the skin, you know, the teeth, because you think of pearly whites and how yeah. people put pearls in their mouth. But like when you get into all the healing properties of pearl, you sit there and go, why aren't we using this? Why aren't we using nature? It comes with no side effects to heal. Why are we using synthetic things in which the body can't absorb and are also causing a bunch of more health issues? You know, a lot of people take something and all of a sudden they get more health issues. And it's like, and it's also, what, oh, whatever they wee and poo out, sorry to be crude, but you're then contaminating the whole water system and everything with it, was, with yeah. the natural products you're actually doing exactly what nature's intended to put those minerals back into um, where they're meant to be. So it's just a win-win situation. I was saying to you before we started, I absolutely love the pearl powder. It's just beautiful. If anyone hasn't tried it yet, please try it because um, it does so many different things, as you say, for collagen, for skin, connective tissue, eyesight, teeth, you name it. It's just got beautiful vibration and frequency to it. So and you don't need a lot either, do you? No, you don't need much. You know, most people take one to two capsules a day or they take yeah. one half teaspoon per day. But, you know, you don't you don't need much. And that's the thing with nature. You don't need much of anything. It gives you everything in a small amount. And, you know, when I was getting into everything related to pearls, you know, it just made me realize it's connected to the moon. You know, and we have the full moon energy coming. It's tomorrow and today and as well. But, you know, the pearl is connected to the moon. So you think everything has a resonance and a frequency. And the most fascinating thing I saw with Pearl was I had a friend who took some of our Pearl powder, put it into some water, froze it, and it resembled a Pearl with the clam once it was frozen. So you have to think your food and everything in which you're consuming is imprinting on your body. And every part of the water and blood in your body is being imprinted by whatever you consume. So if you bring toxins in, they're just going to break everything down. 
But if you bring beautiful things from nature, the body begins to heal. But this journey has taught me just so much of, once again, things in which I didn't know or didn't think were possible. And it's just the completely opposite. And it was funny because somebody sent me a video the other day and I actually reposted it of a person who was up in Canada who was using a machine to regrow teeth utilizing ultrasounds. So then you sit there and think, okay, we lose a tooth. Can we regrow a tooth? Kind of like, like a salamander, you know, or something like that. Crocodiles what? and alligators do all the time. I was just saying, they grow back the, the limb. So you sit there and go, then maybe we can do that too. We just need the right frequency. And that's where you start to sit there and go, oh my gosh, our whole industry, you know, whether it's the, the, the teeth or the eyes or whatever else, all of these industries are just trying to make us come back to keep paying. We're never actually solving the issue. And that's what this whole journey of Cultivate Elevate, of solutions on everything rather than fear, has taught me just there are solutions to everything. And we just have to, you know, take the initiative, like we just talked about, taking the initiative and going, I want to change, I want to be better, I want to be healthier, and how can I do that? And we provide all of that and then some on our website on Cultivate Elevate. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And just the excitement for anyone. I challenge anyone, pick one plant that you've been told is a weed, you know, dandelion, nettles, cleavers. There's so many. And just spend a day. You don't even need to spend a day. Spend a couple of hours researching it. You will be blown away by how many, the simple nettle plant, we've got them everywhere in the UK. They are so medicinal for so many areas of our body. And there's a reason why animals in nature will go and self-select these. But the great thing is, is you'll notice they'll only take what they need when they need it. So I think another example, one of the things I love about the work you've been doing about the clothing, Matt, is that if you're going to spend a bit of money about an organic linen clothes, you're going to really look after it and get away from this awful disposable culture that we've got where um, it really gives back the joy and the care and the nurturing and really looking after what we've got and appreciating it. Well, and I like that you said that the first part about, you know, the the the, the war on weeds. Yeah, that's what they tell us, you know, you got to get rid of them all. And it's funny because I filmed a video yesterday showing the bees sitting on the clovers. That's all coming up. Yeah. by me. And it's like, so if I poison these, I poison the bees and then I poison myself, you know, like it doesn't make any sense. So you can use those as tea, you know, you can use all the different things that come up as tea, yeah. like you said, best healing properties. Then when you get into clothing, yes, clothing all has a frequency. You know, you get into linen, you get into wool, cashmere, hemp, organic cotton, you know, all those beautiful materials, they all resonate with our bodies. You know, they used to wrap people in linen in the hospital beds so that they would heal faster. You know, back in the 1900s, 1910s, they had linen sheets, everybody had linen, they would wrap the person so that the wounds would heal quicker because there's so much light frequency coming off the linen versus when we're wearing things like plastics and polymers and things from DuPont, because DuPont just owns everything of plastic, anything of that nature, now we're not getting those light frequencies. They're all blocked and we build up all this static on our body. And this is why when a person who's having polyester sheets and sleeping in them starts to build up a lot of static and develop restless leg syndrome, because yeah. your legs are constantly having all the static, the blood's all getting all thick, and then you can't sleep. So what you can do is you can get yourself some linen sheets and you will sleep like a baby. And it's wild because when you start wearing these materials, linen, wool, hemp, cashmere, organic cotton, you know, all five of those, when you start wearing those materials, you will feel the difference. It's not a placebo. It's just you will feel, your body will feel at ease. You'll feel, it's like putting on, you know, a, a cashmere. You just feel like you have a nice blanket on you. You know, just this really cozy, comfortable. Versus if you put polyester, you feel all itchy and hot and yeah. like irritated. And it's funny because it's developing all this static, which is actually making you irritated. Like it's, 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 it's cooking the body. That's what plastic does. People get all angry because they got plastic all over but, you know, clothing holds a frequency and we need to go back to wearing the natural materials. They last longer. They don't put plastics that go into your skin and absorb into your body. And they also allow the body to heal. And when it comes to healing, if you're sleeping in your bed for eight hours a night or making any friction in that bed as well, too, you should be doing it in linen sheets.
Yeah, absolutely. And watch how your animals respond to you as well, because they're picking up on the energies all the time. And I think that's a, a real sign for all of us. We can learn a lot for them. So look at your animals bedding and things as well. That's really, really important. So what are you most excited about for this year? What's what's really your next point of research? Because you love researching everything, don't you? I go a little crazy with it. You know, when yeah. I get into it, it's it's pretty much like books and books and books. You know, just finding a lot more books. I've been doing a lot of stuff with color prisms and understanding color prisms and spectrums. And I'm working on some stuff with water. I have this idea of how to bring back structured water with prisms. And that's like a whole thing that I'm going to be creating soon. And then working on some different superfoods, you know, working on a couple of different mushrooms, things related to ginseng, you know, things like that. But, you know, my path just kind of leads to another. I don't, it's just kind of, I wake up and wherever it goes, that's where it seems to go. But, you know, Cultivate Elevate is just about, we'll be bringing out some more products, releasing the book, maybe do a book tour or something like that. Want to do some traveling, see some uh, megalithic sacred sites and things like that. But just, you know, working on just trying to absorb as much information as I can to provide solutions so that people don't have to sit in the nonsense. You know, because when I had all my health issues, I would go to the professional and they'd tell me it's genetic and I'm getting older. And that was it. You know, and I thought, wow, OK, that led me nowhere. So, you know, we need solutions. And I think if we all take our part and we all do a little something, you know, we can have a better humanity and society altogether. And so my path is just leading to where can I come up with something next that can I work on a different pathway to start healing a different pathway? That's kind of what I'm doing. The other one I want to do too, which relates as well, is something with the lights. Something yeah. to get rid of the LED nonsense and all the stuff that mess with our eyes because there, there is a counter and I think it relates to prisms, but it's just, yeah, the lights just, it's too much. The, the frequencies and all the whatever and the, the ringing, it's uh, just, there, there needs to be a solution for that as well too. I think that's absolutely huge. Um, I was speaking to someone yesterday and he's bringing out a documentary about how to make your home non-toxic because, you know, our home should be a place of sanctuary where we go for healing, not the, the place where it makes us ill. And I think it's just going to be fantastic that so many people are really waking up to this because it, it, it is madness. I've got a feeling there's going to be a huge breakthrough in the electric side of things in the free electricity and the different way of power very very soon have you seen anything new coming up on that i mean obviously you're sharing a lot of the ancient wisdom but so with that i did a video showing when you spin mercury you can create voltage so i think if people start to kind of tap back into understanding mercury and they tell us to stay away from it yeah you know you, you can understand why you know because if you can power your house oh that's you know that's not good for business that's for sure so, you know, when we tap back in, I think, like you said, I think people will start to get more into this. People can also research atmospheric energy with Herman Plawson, all of his work where he was sending balloons up into the sky and gathering a bunch of energy, too, because the higher you go up, the more energy that's there. But, you know, I think a lot of people are going to kind of keep going the route of trying to figure things out because all they keep doing is just raising prices. Exactly. You know, there's. There's no less or more of what is available. They just manipulate the prices for whatever they feel like doing. And even, for example, if you want to laugh, like in Arizona, I remember at one time, this was like a couple of years ago, the fees on the electric bill were more than the actual electric itself. And I sat there and thought, but I'm not using that much electricity, but I get feed two to three times as much. So people will get fed up. And like I said, people will want to explore, but I think people should look into mercury. They can look into radium. Uh, they can look into baseline glass, which is another interesting one, you know, but read into atmospheric energy, read into books before 1910, especially because they were all about the ether and they understood it and just read a lot of books into magnetism. And I think those ones, they'll, people will kind of start to go, okay, if I use some magnets with copper, I could light up a light bulb Yeah, and I don't have to, you know, purchase from X, Y, Z. I it's really interesting, actually, about the ether, because um, do you listen to Bob Proctor at all? It sounds familiar. I, uh, he's, I love Bob Proctor. Unfortunately, he's just died but um, recently, but he's uh, amazing. And he mentions in all his training about ether because he's very into tapping into the universal laws to, and very much into changing mindset. And when you look at some of these older generation teachers, they're all talking about the ether and tapping into the ether. And then suddenly it's just cut out of all our vocabulary. So... I'm on a mission to bring that back as well. Let's all flood the internet with that. Um, I like 
Oh. Yeah, I think we've got to. It, I think people are so creative. Once people get out there and start experimenting with all these things, that is the beauty. We can use the social media, use the internet to spread all these solutions. And people really are doing that now. So I'm quite excited to see everyone getting out there. And quite often, you know, get the children to have a go. They'll come out with all sorts of solutions that we, we haven't thought of. Um, so in terms of keeping out of the drama of what's going on, how do you keep level-headed about that? And how have you really tuned into your discernment over the last couple of years? You know, with that one, it's just kind of like with whatever situation occurs, I try to look at it from every single angle before I kind of make, you know, a decision. So like even with the internet outage thing, you know, where did it occur? Okay, it only occurred in one place and it only occurred in New York, like New York City. It didn't occur in all the rest of the country or all the rest of the world. So then if it was solar flares, wouldn't it be the whole world at the same time, you know, and whatever. So I kind of look at it from every angle. And then, you know, just like I said, with especially with spending a lot of time in nature, you kind of like just learn to look at things and observe and kind of wonder how something works and how it functions. And then just kind of when I go into my day, that's the same thing I do, you know, and they're always, it's it's like clockwork. You know, if, if it's not an illness that allegedly is gonna come from aliens, you know, it's some tax or whatever it may be or whatever. And then if it's not that, it's some climate nonsense. And it just, you start to see that it's just such a repetitive pattern. Yeah. You know, I think that's the other thing. Like when you start to look at it, you're like, okay, every three months they're going to do X, Y, and Z and then say whatever. And then you start to realize that none of those things actually happen. You know, like it, it doesn't happen that way, but it's, 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 it's what's built into it. And they also work on moon cycles, which yeah. is another thing. And people should be really aware, like right now during the full moon, your nerves are on the most edge because that moon is pulling on you. And this is why, you know, people used to, you know, go crazy during the full moon. They have the most babies. There's the most accidents, you know, all these things that happen during the full moon. So they cue a lot of these events during those times. And if you want to take it a step further, all the political events, when they elect somebody or select whatever the nonsense is, those happen around the full moon and during an eclipse. So you see that the people who orchestrate the nonsense follow what's going on with the moon cycles. And then you start to see, oh, okay, well, during that time, I just need to spend more time with nature because they're just going to try to pull some nonsense. And I think the more we focus on ourselves, our health, the food that we grow, you know, get, uh, get dousing and getting your own water, you know, understanding your own energy and going back into that, you know, even going back into stuff with candles and fire, connecting yeah. with fire, you know, all of those things, the more that a lot of the stuff, as much as it's happening, it's really not doing anything to your life. Like, did your life change based on yesterday's situation? You have the internet today, so it didn't. Yeah. You act right back to what you were. But the emotional state in which they put you in made you crazy and mm -hmm. made you go buy a whole bunch of rations or food or something, you know, like something, whatever, because of that. So it's important to be very level-headed and look at things from every angle before, you know, an event or a, while an event occurs, because the fact that it's just usually just trying to pull you, you know, they're just trying to pull you over here. And then when you're not paying attention over here, oh, we got this one over here. And even I think like the, the, whatever King Charles or whatever came out the other day talking about the climate and whatever, the man's got so much wealth. His, his the crown alone is worth more than like anybody's amount of wealth that it has. He could fix things overnight, exactly. but it's our fault. And that's why I say it's important to look at these things and go, does it really seem like it's our fault or is it really somebody else? And to have discernment to look through it and go, yeah, I don't really believe anything that you're saying. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing over here. Yeah, completely. And I think you're very good on, on your Instagram and things of not reacting to people because there's a lot of angry people around, aren't there? <laughs> so. Yes, there are. The robots, the robots come out in full force. And it's just it's it's wild. And and what people don't know, you know, with the algorithms is that let's say you have one person who's on this side and you have one person's on this side. When you post a video, what Instagram and social media will do is it will start to show your video to this side. Oh, completely. Tell me about. <laughs> so then all of a sudden, all these people will appear on your page or YouTube or whatever it is, and they will start coming at you because the algorithm has set it up to divide us so that we're just fighting. And this used to happen all the time 
with the vegan and the carnivore people. Yeah. They would just, they would post a video and then all of a sudden all the vegans come and then all of a sudden the people are telling you got to eat meat. It's divide and conquer. This is how the algorithms are set up for social media. So with anything that posting up and putting up on social media, you have to be aware of how these algorithms are set up and who's going to come. And a lot of the times when the robots come in or the AI or whatever it may be that come onto my page and start whatever, you know, I just say best wishes. I'm not using the energy. I don't got the time. I don't, we don't, we don't got time for this. We have bigger things that are trying to impact our life all the time and trying to harm us than us sitting going back and forth and then arguing because the algorithm has sent you to my page. Completely, absolutely completely. And, and and it's so funny because I have never once gone on any page of any social media and written another negative comment. If I don't like it, I just don't look at it. I mean, it's really not that hard, is it? But um, I think this is where the understanding and the tolerance of where people's gone. The only way we can do that is, as you say, is by changing yourself and not reacting back. Otherwise, it just gets into an energetic battle. So thank you so much for that. I am really excited for your book to come out. I cannot wait to get it. I'm going to be playing in my garden this um, this weekend with the electroculture. And I've got five cats, so I'm going to be able to see whether they go and sleep under it all. Um, any final words? Anything else you wanted to cover today? No. So the last one I would just say is in, in my book, I will be also showing something called the Ebner effect, which I think everybody should look into. And this is kind of what it makes me think about giants and how people used to be really big. There used to be very large static fields, but there was a Swiss uh, scientist who put seeds and uh, fish eggs in high static fields. And he noticed that, for example, a little baby trout would turn into like a salmon. Wow. And this was real time. So when you think of what electroculture is doing with your plants, yeah. it's doing the exact same thing. It's raising the static fields, it's it's creating static fields and, and you're harnessing that energy. And then when he did this with plants, like a fern, it looked like something out of like a different world. It didn't even look like a fern anymore. So, and this was to counter, which is funny, he created this to counter Monsanto and GMOs. So you sit there and go, there are counters towards everything. All the stuff they're trying to do, there's a counter towards everything, but that will also be included in the book. But I wanted to put that in there because I think people need to see that there is some crazy possibilities that we have no idea. And I think this route will lead us into something in which is really going to open up our eyes and our minds to the true potential of how much food we can have. I, I really do think it's a huge breakthrough. It's just literally imagine all the people all over the globe just doing a little bit in their own gardens. Imagine how much that's going to shift the energy. The, you know, these things can really make a huge impact. And then we can all look up and see what impact is having on the sky. So thank you so much for that. You'll have to come back when your book's out um, so we can go through some details of that. Have a fantastic weekend, everyone. It's full moon. So I've got to collect all my black cats and get out of my broomstick. Um, <laughs> it's a busy night for me. Um, but no, I really do appreciate all you do. And, I, and most importantly, I appreciate the way you do it. And if people have not tried the pearl powder yet, you have got to try it. My animals are thriving on it as well. So, um, you know, don't forget your, your animals need this stuff too. Thanks so much, Matt. Thank you so much for having me on. I'll see you next Take time. Care. Bye.